Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. All right. Good morning, everybody. What's going on? Yeah. It's wrestling time. Yes, sir. Woo! Let's go. Oh, man. It's Sunday morning here on the Mark Hoke Show on K Dawn. 101.5 FM, it is the talk of Las Vegas, and it is the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment most of the time, as we get ready for a terrific show coming up for you this morning. I'm Mark Hoke. We're having uh, some interesting fun in the studio. It's all good. <laughs> interesting. It's all good. good. word for it. But we've got uh, Brian Ronovich from... Las Vegas Wrestling Scene dot com. Dot com. What's going on, buddy? Man, doing good. How are you, sir? I'm conscious. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Sunday little, morning. Yeah. I'm a little tired. Yeah. A little tired today. Yeah. You sound a little peaked. You gotta, yeah, you gotta man, pep up. This is this is I, I we could use a few less shows in Las Vegas. <laughs> it, it, it is just kidding, but Aww. it's just been, yeah, really, really busy. Good busy, but busy. Nonetheless. Oh, you poor baby. No, not at all. I chose this. Yes, you did. You know? And, of course, also in studio with us at the moment. Hopefully he won't run away. <laughs> the David Difference. What's yes, going on, big man? Uh, oh, what a difference that Dave makes. Thank you. Uh, it is an honor to be here with you, gentlemen. And I am excited about today, man. It's going down. You know, it's not only Sunday, but it's Day of Reckoning. It is. It is <laughs> Day of Reckoning oh, for all. For everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we have a huge card here in town for future stars of wrestling. It is going to be a big one. We're hoping Nick Xander's going to get in here. We we had a little, apparently had a little wire crossing, but we're efforting. We are we are efforting. To, there was no there was no wire crossing. No, somebody dropped the ball. Yeah, and, and it was me. It, it is one hundred percent me. I should have followed up with him. The show's not over. Yeah, we he's, be here. he's he's he's. I'm sure something happened. Uh, He'll I'm be sure. here. I trust. So we'll. I we'll, still should have followed up and made sure. We've got we've got plenty of time <laughs> to get Nick on the show. So we'll uh, we'll appreciate hope. you bringing that up, D man. <laughs> D man, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's back. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll get Nick Xander on the show. He's yeah, challenging. Come for on, the, heartbeat. Come on, if anyone, everyone out there listening. Yeah, call just up the hit heartbeat. him up on Facebook. We got to hear you. Yeah, tonight's his night. I mean. Yeah. He's going, like you were about to say, he's going for the FSW Heavyweight Championship tonight against Ice Williams. No holds barred, and who knows where that's going to go. Yeah, the faction barred from the barred from the arena for the match, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, the rest of the faction, I think. Yeah. I'm not I mean, mistaken. And a no holds barred, I mean. Doesn't matter. <laughs> right. How can you bar somebody, but there's no holds barred? Right. I'm just well, checking on that. There's, hey, that's... Well, that's, I thought that's that was the barring. stipulation after the last was that the faction wasn't going to be allowed from in the facility mm. or something like that. Complete ban. Know. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll make sure they don't get in the building except for their match tonight. Yeah, they got a big match. Yeah, they do. Vesco and Watson got their hands full. West Coast Wrecking Crew is in Las Vegas. And, yeah, like tonight's just going to be action-packed, man. Two-time FSW Tag Team Champions, mm. one of the best teams in – Vegas history, really, especially yeah. in FSW. This is going to be an awesome card tonight. Highly recommend if you have not gotten a ticket yet, go to fswvegas.com, and, man, it is going to be off the chain tonight yes, in the sir. FSW arena. So yes, get on down there. It's going to go to fswvegas.com and catch this main event. Because Danny Limelight's going to be there. He's wrestling Jacob Austin Young. We had Danny on the show last week. Poppy, he's going to be ready to hurt somebody. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a really good match, too, yep. as long as Bodie doesn't get involved. And like and, and I, I'm looking on here, by the way, I see Vandegrift and Vidal are uh, yeah. on the card. How that? When did that happen? Um, I think that was, that's was that been in the works. Okay. I, I think they just released a flyer on that, so I'm excited to see how this one goes down. I mean, best friends 
roommates, like long history, and now we're dealing with. I, I, I'm just going to call it battle of the egos, and <laughs> you know, yeah, because what Vidal got him after uh, his banner went up on the wall yeah. at the FSW Arena. Vandegrift came out for some reason and to help Jay, to congratulate. Well, him. yeah, yeah. yeah. I you don't know, think I mean, Jay. I don't think Jay, Jay cared for that too much. He stole that spotlight. Yeah. You remember when, uh, <laughs> like, looking back as a kid when uh, uh, Andre got the award and oh, Hogan came yeah. out? I was juiced, yep, but watching yep. it now, it's like, yeah, that yeah, wasn't your spot. I didn't Hogan. need you to come out and get in the ring with me while <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. getting they, celebrated. And I'm, you know? and I'm trying to remember didn't didn't they give Andre this little baby trophy that was this you know like. Something you get in fifth grade for finishing the season out. <laughs> Might and, have been. and Hogan got that massive yeah, award. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, that would have made me mad, too. Yeah. I think I might have challenged Hogan at that point. I look, you know, can we speak on Hogan real quick? Like, that was my guy. Yo, me too. Me, me too. me too, for sure. Watching that stuff now, it, I see him a whole different I see why people always turned on him. <laughs> you know, oh, it's just yes. like he always yes. took the spotlight. He was always the guy. He was in everybody's mix. Macho Man Elizabeth, it's like, mm-hmm. now nah, I can see it. As a kid, it was like, nah, he could do no wrong. But watching back, it's like, Well, you, yeah. you realized Bobby Heenan was right all those years. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I always remember when he turned heel, Heenan went crazy. He was like, I always I told it. you. It was I told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it was just like, you could, if you hated Heenan, you couldn't say anything right, to right. him because he was right. Right. It, yeah. it was pretty cool, so. That was classic. Yeah, so this is going to be a fun night coming up, and hopefully we'll get Nick, but we also have another amazing guest coming on today, guys. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a name that kind of gets put off to the side because of his brother and his dad, but this guy could go to and had an amazing career, and he's going to be honored at the Cauliflower Alley Club this year for – He's the two, 2023 Men's Award winner, Wrestling Award winner. Joe Malenko is going to be on the show. I'm excited about yeah, that. Yeah, it's going to be good. Man. And another, and I think another reason, too, maybe people don't know him as well as his brother is because most of his stuff was in Japan. Right. So, you know, that was before the internet, too. So, Yeah, if, if, you know. if, if Joe would have been wrestling in this era. Uh, yeah, I think oh, it would have been a lot different. His complete 100% double superstar. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, and if you... If you want to do something while you're listening to us here on Kadon, before Joe comes on, hop on YouTube real quick. After you subscribe to our YouTube channel, right? then go and look up Joe Malenko, and there are some amazing matches that he's got on YouTube right now. Um, I watched a couple coming before the, you know, this week before we had him on the show, and uh, saw he and Dean wrestle the British Bulldogs. Yeah. Him wrestling Dean Classic. for the All Japan uh, Junior Heavyweight Championship. Unbelievable stuff. So we're going to get to talk to Joe Malenko about uh, how things are going and what uh, his career was like and all those fun questions. It's going to be a, a great time. So we're looking forward to have Joe Malenko on in the second hour of the show. Absolutely. Man, I can't wait. That's going to be good. Yeah. And, of course, and don't forget, by the way, the Cauliflower Alley Club is doing their – Big event here in Las Vegas, the uh, 28th to the 30th. Yep, the CAC, CAC reunion coming up at the plaza, 28th to 30th. Get a membership, make, make a donation, uh, 25 bucks goes straight to the club, and you get the newsletter, and you get all sorts of great privileges, and you get to come, you know, you, you get admission into the event, and then, of course, there's all sorts of other neat mm-hmm. stuff going on, banquets and the Bachwinkle blowout. I'm going to go to the Bachwinkle blowout. Yeah. yeah, I mean they're both both banquets. I mean both nights, but still, I mean anything that says Bachwinkle blowout to me is. <laughs> have Have you been before? No, I haven't. Okay, yeah, me neither. Like I would oh, go, okay. like when we set up, <laughs> like years back, like I would go like with the setup for FSW for the ring and stuff. Right. But yeah, I never. So this year, I'm, I, I'm. It's on my calendar. I plan on attending, becoming a member. Uh, I definitely, I, I love the cause, and I just think it's a lot of good energy over there. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah and of course, that's cool. Yeah, and the CAC, what they do is they help out uh, wrestlers and wrestling professionals that have fallen on hard times. And, of course, we know a lot of them don't have insurance and things like that. And, you know, you think back, especially the territory days, <laughs> they didn't have insurance. Just imagine, you know, what their lives were like outside of the ring sometimes and, you know, not having that support. And the CAC is there to help them out when things go wrong. So, you know. 
certainly a worthwhile cause if you you know if you love pro wrestling and you know, give back a little bit you yeah, know? yeah no, I, I definitely think it's a beautiful thing i mean like you said like yeah people do this for the passion and for the crowd like they're putting on the show and everything and a lot of times it just leaves you you know withered at the end and injured and you know then what do you got so cauliflower alley club uh, like that's an amazing organization yep cauliflower alley org is the website so check it out and see what everything they've got going on well, a lot going on in professional wrestling this week, boys. Yes, yeah. Sir. Holy cow. And I was about ready to rip my hair out, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which one? Which one? Funny guy. <laughs> nah, funny, funny guy. <laughs> look, I actually need a haircut talking. right now. I got I got some extra in the back. You're looking good, man. You're oh, looking good. Well, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. But um, <laughs> what, what are you doing? Brian Trying Robin to just, see which wow. one, too. <laughs> He's examined. Yeah, I've God. taken a lot of heat you this know, morning, okay? <laughs> we're soon going to have this show on video, by the way. <laughs> yes. And and if you would have seen that, Brian is was taking his glasses off. <laughs> and he's very fortunate that they're in one section of the booth and I'm in the other. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Because, man, yeah, there I might be... feel fortunate. Yeah, there might be a little... Uh, Let's, phlegm on the glasses. Let's, let's keep it cordial, man. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Come on, we're all gentlemen here. Yeah, yeah. for real. <laughs> but, Come on. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> you know, I, I think I want to start off with we have a new championship belt in WWE. Yep. Man, what a great ceremony with Triple H as he unveiled the title after one of the Dumbest, most illogical speeches I've ever heard in professional wrestling. <laughs> right. Ever, huh? Yes. That's, wow. a lot to that's, through. that's, yeah. So here's the deal. So we have Roman Reigns. We talk to Roman, and Roman isn't going to wrestle as much. And he negotiated that he's only going to defend the whatever title it is now, because now I don't even know what to call it a few times a year, you know, and he's not going to be a fighting champion anymore, even though he's got both championships. (laughs) Right. So now we unveil the world heavyweight championship. It's beautiful, by the way. Beautiful. I love that belt. Man, it's nice. It's kind of a combo of everything. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it looks like the big gold belt. Yep. Sort of, but then sort it's got a it. big WWE logo in it, but it's a little bit smaller. You know, it's yeah. it's it's a beautiful title. It's nice. It's gorgeous. But, guys, this makes no sense. Okay, I'm trying right. to figure out. Okay, so now Roman's got the two titles. Does he give, does he still have the two titles? Or is this a third title? I mean, I got to tell you guys, I was listening to, you know, a, a few different podcasts this week. Okay. Jim Cornette, Brian Alvarez, all torch in this idea because there's no logic behind it. There's no logic behind this move. I don't I don't get why they didn't just take one of the belts off Roman at some point here, maybe at WrestleMania, you know, and then have a brand new cute belt. But then then to make the matters even worse. So if if you're making if you want Cody eventually to be the champion, right? You know, and be the one to beat Roman Reigns. And the WWE draft, which I hate, by the way. I hate the WWE draft. I think it's lame and stupid. They drafted him over to Raw, and they put Roman on SmackDown. So now Cody can't wrestle Roman. Well. I mean, I I don't don't (laughs) mind. I don't mind when you're trying to do some things. But make it logical. There's uh, no logic here. Um, Mark. Hope. Yes. I got. I got a question for you. Sure. Talk to him, David. Do you remember the gobbly gooker? Yeah, I remember the gobbly gooker. <laughs> Was there logic behind that? None. <laughs> this is now, how are, no, no. Hold <laughs> okay, it. Hold okay. it, David. Difference. All hold right, on a right, second. Right. Hold on a Go second. Ahead. Are you comparing the situation <laughs> of the gobbledy gooker? The egg dude, Mr. Uh, Mr. I mean, that was uh, Hector Guerrero, if I remember correctly. Yes, sir. Was the gobble. <laughs> right. Are you comparing the hatching of an egg to introduce a new wrestler to completely screwing up your world heavyweight championship picture? 
Uh, okay. Yeah, I did. I did. You did. <laughs> you did. That was. That but look, was, you gobbledygooked. I, I was... We're gonna call that gobbledygooking on the show from now on. Good right, job. Bad. Good job. Everybody's dropping the ball today, man. <laughs> oh man, we need to get it together, fellas. But if you want to make your uh, point, go, go, go ahead. Ice Williams. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So. Again, I mean, I, I, I want to believe there's strategy to this, right? So, I mean, they're also talking about behind the scenes news is they're gearing up for next WrestleMania. For so you got to flesh that story out. If they're, I mean, going at it now, we're just going to see a lot of uh, fluff matches and situations. So I think you know, again, when Triple H said you haven't seen the full story, we have to somehow understand that they got something in the works. Yeah, I, I agree. I as far as the belt goes. I don't understand that either. I didn't necessarily think it was ne- it was I didn't I don't believe it was necessary depending on how long they're going to keep Roman out. I you know, I think it's maybe a way like UFC does it if a, if a fighter is going to be out for a length of time and they do an interim championship and they've done it for guys that were only going to be out 8 or 9 months, I think. So but as far as like the um Ron Smackdown, I have no pro- it actually didn't surprise me at all that Cody ended up opposite roman because if they're going a year out like you were talking about dave with the fleshing it out like you you're overthinking it mark to the standpoint of like it only takes a second to fix it so like they can they can have them separate cool it off let cody keep his keep get momentum keep going and then you can kind of come back together at the end where they where they face off at wrestlemania for you know a unification or whatever something like that Maybe they'll Wait, let you throw the belt away at WrestleMania next year in Philadelphia. So, but, but here's but here's my thing. So we're starting. I, you know, if if you're starting a new title, if if this is separate from the merged unified title, basically what you've told everybody is number one: my champion Roman Reigns mm-hmm. is too lazy to defend this title. Mm-hmm. He's he's a bad dude, and he's and he's a bum. Because he won't defend the title. <laughs> well, let's get right? him on the phone. <laughs> uh, let's get. I, I'm find fine out with what that. He thinks. Yeah, okay, no, that'd be great. And we've got nobody that can beat Roman Reigns. So instead of figuring out a way to beat Roman Reigns, we're going to make another championship that's going to be. You know, here's your consolation prize, everybody. The king's still over here, but none of you can beat the king. So we've got to make another championship just to make you feel better. I mean, not- it feels like a participation trophy to me. Well, I think that you're I'm not I'm not saying that I agree with what they're doing based on what I'm seeing here, but I think trying to judge the book on chapter 1 is a mis- like I think they're really early in this. Yeah. And it looks like it's all in pieces, but I think the the real judgment is going to be a little bit further down before we go okay, cuz it might make a ton of sense in a month. That's that's all I'm saying. I feel like we're we're looking at it too soon. Well, I mean, a great example is when you look at, like, The Rock versus Cena. When he came out, it was like, a year from now, mm-hmm. we're going to get down. And we were like, a year? Like, Undertaker <laughs> yeah. and Shawn Michaels. Yeah. How are they going to keep this going? And, like, I mean, they I... They it I, off. Yeah, yeah. You know, like we were talking about before the show. You know, HBK was looking at the, the monitor and seeing Undertaker's matches. You knew the match was coming, but they just... It was real quiet for a while, and then it built back up, and... That's what I think they're going to do with this. Yeah, to make for an amazing moment. And as a kid, I, I like to go back to my childhood. Of course, here. Um, I was I was devastated when the gobbledygooker popped out. <laughs> we all were. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's one of those situations. But they man. killed it. They were smart to realize. <laughs> yeah, they were like, like, maybe. Where was that supposed to go? Was that supposed to go somewhere else or? <laughs> <laughs> No, this was this was going to be your new intercontinental champion. He's going to win the something. rumble. He's going to win the royal rumble. <laughs> yeah, challenge for the title. Yeah, I, I just I don't know see, where you thought where anywhere in that whole idea anyone thought that was a good idea. Like we'll put him in a bird costume. Like oh, like, Pritchard thought it was that's a good idea. Right where it should have stopped. Pritchard like, thought it was a good uh, idea. Man, <laughs> yeah. well, he yeah. went to Vince and said, "Let's put let's put let's put Hector Guerrero in an egg, in a chi- in a chicken suit." Yeah. This is a great idea. They're going to love it, Vince. Well, you know you know the beautiful thing about it. 
30 years later, here we are. We're still today. talking about it. <laughs> it was one of those moments, oh. man. And that's why I love this business. You know? oh. yeah. Well, yeah. you know what I love? I love taking a commercial break because we've got to get one in. <laughs> right. We're running a little long. So how about we step back? Let's take a break here on the Mark Hoke Show on KDON 101.5 FM. It is the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. Hopefully we'll hear from Nick. But if not, come down to the FSW Arena and cheer him on. Joe Malenko on Sunday. And, and Joe DeFalco, by the way, will we also on the second hour so we'll get to hear from joe as well as the uh, overlord of S- fsw will be on the show <laughs> El Capitan. yes so stick around everybody got a whole lot more on the mark oak show including trinity's back stick around the mark oak show is proud to announce our partnership with pro wrestling's premier charity the cauliflower alley club For nearly 60 years, the CAC has stood strong, assisting members of the wrestling industry in their times of need. Please join us in supporting the Cauliflower Alley Club by becoming a member for just $25 a year or make an individual donation today. Go to caulifloweralleyclub.org and give back to the people that have brought us so much entertainment and joy in pro wrestling. Once again, that's caulifloweralleyclub.org. 1015 FM KDON. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And a feisty Mark Hoke at that. That's right, everybody. The world champion, Mark Hoke. God, could you imagine that? Could you imagine actually getting to be what? the world champion? Well, David Arquette did, right? Or <laughs> ISWCW. Well, all you had to do is, is star in a bad movie and... You know, right. pay a wrestling company off hard enough, you're good. Yeah, there you go. Sure. I'm Mark Hoke along with the David Difference, Brian Ronovich, also here. Joe Malenko joining us in the second hour of the show. Wrestling legend. Of course, that amazing family. Boris Malenko, by the way, his dad. Yeah. He was a mean dude. Yeah. He was a mean, mean man. Very, very good heel. If you never saw any of Boris's work. Yeah. But uh, that, but his dad was pretty interesting. I, I was reading some stuff up on him too, and you know, getting ready for the show. And wow, guy that would just change characters all over the place, but was became one of the nastiest heels in the history of pro wrestling until the handshake with Jack Briscoe. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. What was the uh, the, the uh, yeah? They hated each other, oh, and they? then after they had a match, they shook hands, and the crowd went crazy. Uh, and you know, it, and it, it was a shoot. But it's it's amazing how you know one moment, and you can totally change a character. Yep, it's absolutely incredible. But that was that was one of the things that, that you know all the Malenkos really were good at was just having that that timing of mm-hmm. when to do things and how things should go. And you know, and that's why you know that's why Dean's still an agent today. Yeah, you know, he's just the, the family just had a great great mind for the business. So looking forward to having Joe Malenko joining us on the show i wish uh i wish the malenko's were running wwe right now oh yeah <laughs> why is that mark what, what are you upset about today more just wondering <laughs> yeah we got more we got more uh, oh, oh we got more right. excellent right. excellent we had the wwe draft which we touched on the start of the draft began on smackdown this week that'll be concluding on monday of course you can only pick half of the roster they split it up so the picks go on Friday on SmackDown, and the other half of the gang gets to go on Raw on Monday. We have no idea who was behind these picks. They were just doors with labels. So no real clue of, of who was behind this debauchery that uh, was the WWE draft. But, guys, well, they, why, why, do you say, why are you so against it? I mean, yeah, why are you so against because it? Because it doesn't work. We the, right. look 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 <laughs> okay. what happened. Look what happened when you just put your best people out there. Reigns went through the roof. Mm-hmm. Plus, all you're doing in in a lot of a lot of circumstances is creating situations that are complicated and messy. Like remember when Becky and Charlotte had to switch the titles? Yes, and that turned into a monster fiasco. Right. And you you just create booking messes when you do it. Why you know if you want to have this person wrestle this person, then just do it. You know somebody shows up on you know been wrestling on SmackDown. They show up on Raw and the, you know you challenge somebody, and it's no big deal. See, so, I think it works better if 
they take both companies and the, the talent stays in that on that show and they don't cross over if that's how you're going to do it with the draft. I think if you're going to have them just wrestle on opposite shows, then you might as well not even go with the charade that they're separate promotions, so to speak, with and, you know, and, separate GMs and stuff because it's baloney. Yeah, and I, I just, I just think it's silly. Well, yeah. so they've they've managed to create some more interesting little situations with day one of this draft. I'm, I'm going to start at the bottom of where did people Cody that, go? Just kidding. Cody went to Raw. <laughs> Roman went to SmackDown. Uh-oh. Here's problem number one. Let's go. You've got the Nigerian Giant, For the man who just wrestled Brock Lesnar. Can I say? Can I say it? Brock Lesnar. Close. All right. Close. He's wrestling Seth Rollins at Backlash. Wouldn't you think that somebody might want him? I mean, seriously, wouldn't you draft him? Oh, of course. Of course you would. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> because not only on the show on SmackDown, but the supplemental Saturday draft, he was not selected. Well, was it not? Um, I heard that uh, MVP negotiated to have him be a free agent. Who are we talking about? Brock Lesnar? Uh, <laughs> I was almost, almost, almost. Oh, almost. That's what we're almost. talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I heard, MVP that, I heard this was a calculated negotiation by MVP. That's what I've heard, strategic. too. Mm, yeah, okay. It's not that yeah. nobody wanted this guy. This guy is a giant, man. Everybody yeah. wants He's him. He's just up in the raising the market value <laughs> instead of being drafted. Yeah. So Go to the highest bidder. <laughs> so then we, then we see Shawn Michaels on the draft. Right. Lose his smile. Mm. Because <laughs> not only did they take the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, but they also took the NXT Women's Champion and pulled him up to the main roster. So his women's division has now been decimated. But, of course, they're going to... You now they've got... It, the, the roster changes take place after Backlash. So now they're going to have a match, and they're going to beat the Tag Team Champions, who you just called up to the main roster this week, it looks like, and send them up to SmackDown with a loss. Well, I, I don't... No. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe. It could put more eyes on NXT, right? Have them going back and forth. Nobody said they can't do that. So, I mean, that, that would be innovative. Asuka, Asuka didn't lose the NXT title before she went up to the main roster. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they saying, don't. But a lot of times not... they've they've beaten the champs before they go Oh, up. for sure. And it makes it really predictable. Yeah. Unfortunately. Here was, here was another one. And... I, and sorry, I'm going down. I'm going down through my list. Yeah. Oh, Bianca Belair. Yes, sir. Bianca Belair, the long reigning Raw Women's Champion, gets drafted to SmackDown. So now you've taken your your Raw Women's Champion, and you're going to ship her over to SmackDown. Why? I don't know. Fox. M- maybe. I mean that that I, me is the, that was the first thing that crossed my mind. I I get it, but sh- if if you were gonna do that, then why didn't you take the belt off her and then let her go to SmackDown and win the title there? So now she's gonna have to. We're gonna we will probably have to do a title switch. We also had the fun situation where we have Roman Reigns was drafted over to uh, over to SmackDown. Sola Sokoa and Paul Heyman are going with him. It said Bloodline's getting drafted over there. But the Usos aren't going. Right. They're not part of this. Why would? But but you have groups like the OC. They're all together. They got drafted in one pile. Well, I the, think. The, they, oh, go ahead. You know the the Viking Raiders. They all get to in Valhalla. They get to stay together. Uh, Imperium's getting to stay together. But you. But but for now, you split the bloodline. Why is it that one group gets drafted together, but the other group doesn't get drafted together? Well, you got an uh, advocate by the name of Paul Heyman, <sighs> who, like, you got to have representation on both brands, right? So I think that's a good move. Yeah, I, I mean, do. I mean, you get, you, you, you want to take over the business. And I think it's kind of like, in my opinion, with the Cody Roman thing, you know, kind of cool off the bloodline a little bit. Like, it doesn't, ha- you know, let it kind of, before you're tired of it, you cool it off before everybody's sick of it. 
and then no one wants to see it. At least that's my opinion. And it, I think that's kind of what you're doing here. Maybe my opinion is just if you're going to if you're going to do if you're going to draft some people as groups, right? Then keep drafting as groups. Right. Don't say, well this group yeah. this group we can draft, but this group you can't. Well, I would I would understand your frustration if Jimmy and Jay had been drafted to different shows. That would have been strange. Yeah, so we don't know, you know, you know we don't know what's going to happen. You know. But I I just like I said, this whole week on WWE has just made no sense to me. And I and I, I'm hoping that I'm I'm just one of those people that I, you know, I kind of like a logic and a story from start to finish. And when I see things that just look like Vince McMahon is throwing stuff around in a hat and he and Pritchard are just like, hey, here's the, it's the dartboard again. You know, I, I called last year on the show, I called it the dartboard. You know, what are we going to do this week? Right. What was that? What was that sound effect? Oh, yeah, dartboard. Let's hear that again. <laughs> You're sick, I man. could go with the kathunk, 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 too. There we go. You know, one of the two. All right, but what I I just am not I I'm gonna try and be patient, but I'm just not seeing what they're doing. I just I why would you go back to something that doesn't things that that people didn't like when you have the ratings going through the roof, the views on the pay per views are going through the roof, everything is on a roll in WWE. You know now we have backlash, and we're gonna wait to talk about backlash until we get Joe on because we'll. You know, do some predictions and stuff. But right now, and I, everybody cared about every WWE premium live event. There's one match on, on Backlash that anybody cares about. I, I think, and that's Cody and Brock. But otherwise, this has turned into a throwaway card. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy, guys. Help me. Yeah, yeah I see. I, I'm not. I, I mean, you were grumpy, man. Like, yeah, the energy is off it, in dude, here. Like, right yeah. out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, right I mean, out of the gate. We knew we were in for it. <laughs> we yeah. knew it. We're like, Mount Hoke is going to erupt today. I, you know, I, I warned everybody it. on Twitter. I warned them. Well, you at delivered. Mark Hoke show. You delivered. Just, you I'm, delivered. Guys, am I, am I overreacting? Um,. <sighs> It well, you're very emotionally invested in this. I yeah. see that, man, and it's altered your state. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do believe that maybe you know, let's just breathe and see where it goes. Here's the thing about a WWE: mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what they do, we're always going to watch it. Right? It, it doesn't matter. Like they they own the space. That's it. We're going to watch to see. Maybe it'll change. That's how I've been a fan. It's like I used to watch it religiously because it was entertaining Mm -hmm. now watch it it's like show me something where are they gonna do something no they didn't okay next week maybe so i i think but that takes a lot of the magic out of it when they know that people are gonna tune in regardless what they do we'll figure it out later and we're still gonna watch it so you know i like that stuff when your your back's against the wall like the monday night wars when like you had to come up with something that made sense that was game changing uh we don't have that nowadays well i think that um you're at the beginning of the book I mean, I just think once they go, WrestleMania is the end of the year, essentially. So this is just the beginning. I mean, if they're if they're legitimately going all the way to Mania for Roman and Cody rematch, then you sure don't want them wrestling each other now. We don't need Cody to be in a tag team match on a pay per view with Brock against Roman and Solo. Like it's it's too soon, you know. You you want to keep that going, and and if they do it too much too fast, then the whole the whole show would be ruined. No, and I'll agree with you on that. I said, I just, I just see a lot of non sequiturs and things that they're going to have to clean up. Yeah. Oh, and, of course. And just, but, but there, I'm sure there's times if you think about it, that things look broken in the beginning of a storyline, but then it started to make sense down the road. That does happen. And I, I don't even know if it's necessarily broken. I mean, the only thing with like, when you talk about the Roman thing with the two belts, you can't really just strip him of the title. Just because you want to strip him of the title, so I I don't think take him if, if that's how you're doing it, you know, because he won both belts, so right. you can't just take one away from him because well it should be on this show, there has to be a reason that he doesn't have the title, so at least for me, so if you're like I say if he's going to be gone for a while, then having another title, 
but ends up being a third title. I'm sure there's going to be a way it ends up dissolving into the other two, you know? Yeah. And I, maybe that's the way they fix this women's thing with Bianca Belair. They have a, a world women's champion. They just make a third world title oh in the women's God. division. <laughs> oh, my God. Another championship? Yeah, let's get another one in there. Let's Everybody do that. gets a belt. Oh, there you go, Mark. Oprah Winfrey. There you go, Mark. There's oh, the solution. God, You're welcome. This, this is going to be like my ex-wife. Everybody gets a turn. <laughs> Oh, I'm hey, sorry. Buddy. Buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. It's pick on Mark Day. Oh, you get a belt. You get a belt. You get a belt. We'll give titles to everybody. It's yeah. belts for all. <laughs> everybody gets a championship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Then everybody right. will be happy, right? Yeah. Exactly. Let's. You is. know what? That's what you do. With the last segment of the show. Let's just pick names for belts and just give somebody a belt. Yeah, I like that, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know. The, the Choco Taco Championship. I like that. I you know, like to we'll, win that title. We'll, we'll give that to. Uh, we'll give that to uh, Valhalla. She gets the Choco Taco Championship. <laughs> okay, I'm good with that. All right. Good booking. Good booking. Thanks, man. Yeah, well, hey, <laughs> I got a question for you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, real quick, because we do have to get a break. I'll save it for after the. Oh break. wait, we got a tease. That's even better. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'll tell you what. Yeah. What a what a funny After show. After the we break. Did. After the break, Dave has a question for me. It's gonna be a blast. Uh, <laughs> but of course, hey, we got Joe Malenko coming up in the second hour. This is gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, you know, more to come on the Mark Oak show. Brian Ronovich, Las Vegas Wrestling Scene.com. Check out everything they've got going on over there. This is an awesome site if you want to know what's happening in the wrestling scene here in Sin City. FSW Vegas, of course, the David Difference, one of the big guns over there, taking care of biz there, too. Thank so you. check that out. And of course, Day of Reckoning tonight. We'll be right back. Tired of the same boring food when you're out for breakfast or lunch? I'm Mark Hoke, and I have an idea for a different place to go with unique food you're sure to enjoy, and that's Unique Eats. Take some time out of your busy day and stop on in to Unique Eats, featuring celebrity chef Dominic Tedesco and his friendly staff. Whether it's a great start to your day with one of Unique Eats' amazing omelets, for lunch with his incredible sandwiches, pasta, and award-winning pizzas, you'll be in for a fantastic dining experience that won't break the bank. Unique Eats also features a smoothie bar and full vegetarian menu as well. Plus, if you need catering, you can count on Unique Eats no matter what the occasion. So what are you waiting for? Get on over to Unique Eats at 3100 South Durango, Suite 100, open daily until 3 p.m. Call them at 702-992-3038 or visit UniqueEatsLV.com for their full menu and catering info. Break out of the same old routine and have a great meal at Unique Eats today. In a kayfabe world, LasVegasWrestlingScene.com brings you the real story. Las Vegas Wrestling Scene is the source for pro wrestling news, along with their up-to-date events calendar. Visit LasVegasWrestlingScene.com. 101.5 FM, KDON. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. All right, we are back on The Mark Hoke Show, the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment here on KDON 101.5 FM. It is the talk of Las Vegas, and we're talking, that's for sure, boys. Non-stop, man. That's yes. what we do. You That's bet. Do. Joe Malenko coming up in the second hour. Dave, you had a question for me. I do, man. And I can't wait to hear this. Me yeah, too. Well, <laughs> I mean, there's such a build on this question, man. And I just um, <sighs> I just need to know, Mark Hulk. Yeah. Do you need a hug, man? No, I don't need a hug. I need a girlfriend. That, I, that, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. that could explain a few things, too, but. Well, I'll, I'll make some calls after the show, man. Yeah, just, there yeah, we yeah. go. All right, I got you, man. I know some people that know some people. All right. We'll make something happen. That was the question, man. I don't know. You know, sometimes people, you know, that energy, people need a hug, man. You seem a little <laughs> set off over there, so that's, oh, it. that's it, it. It was just a bad, a bad, bad wrestling week. Oh, you it know really what? It really was. You hear that? Heartbeat? Yeah, I do. Flatlined. Today and somebody dropped the ball. No. <laughs> Nick okay, Xander is okay, not in the so, building. Okay, so oh, we'll we, find. We it. have heard from Xander. Oh, we yeah. did. Had a situation. I'm not going to go into details. Okay. But he had a situation. 
He just messaged me. He apologized to everybody except the faction. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he apologized. He said he's really sorry. Well, but it was something he had to he had to handle. Well, tell Nick if he wants tell him if he wants to call the second hour. Once we wrap up with Joe, we can uh, we can get him on. I'm or, or efforting. Okay, so just let him know we got time. I'm, a, I'm let me say this because I was I was breaking balls here, but Nick Xander is a stand up dude, and I was looking forward like you know I, I talked to him a lot. I seen his first match. I seen him training behind the scenes, and I was excited to have him in here and get that energy, the heartbeat, especially. I mean, tonight's a big night for this guy. Yes, it going is. Going for the FSW Heavyweight Championship. Like, to see when he started to now, like, I, I just want to know his mindset going into this one. I'm, hopefully he calls in, man. Yeah, so we'll, we'll figure it out. It'll be fun. I do want to talk about somebody that did something right this week, by the way. <laughs> okay. So, uh, shoot me oh. the number, Mark. Okay, I will do that. Um, Impact has done a couple nice things over the past week or two. Of course, we got we got a new champion out there, and when Josh Alexander had to vacate the vacate the championship, as uh, well, De- well, Deanna Peraza won the women's title, and then Macklin won the uh, the world championship. So you got the hubby wife team taking over Impact, okay. and they've really been doing some great stuff. But I don't know if you saw what happened, and it's been put up by Impact. Trinity Fatu, of course, otherwise known as Naomi, has signed a contract and she'll be making her first appearance on Impact coming up next week on their show. So, guys, your thoughts of Impact landing Trinity? Uh, I think that's big news. It it was definitely a surprise uh, seeing her go there. And I did see the um, they posted on their social media her entrance behind the scenes uh, because I guess it was pre tape right? So. Um, yeah, and the crowd seemed ecstatic about this. Yeah, it's 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 crazy to see her back. And Impact was, um, you know, was certainly not a place that I thought she was going to show up. But this is a this is a big coup for them, and it's going to get a lot of extra eyes on Impact. You know, and I really liked what they've been doing over the past year or so. And now, um, you know, adding her to that women's roster. And getting her and Deanna Perrazzo, that's going to be fun. I, you know, I think you're going to have a great feud there, and you know, I think it's a terrific news for for the gang over at Impact. So good for them. Yeah, no, I, I think good for them. Yeah, it's bringing a lot of eyes. She's a uh, tremendous talent, you know. And just to see her there, and you know, it's good to see her back again. It will be good to see her back again. I, I wonder if Mercedes Monet will show up there as well. Ah, uh, yeah, that would be magical. Well, un- unfortunately for, it, uh, well. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Finish your thought. We got, we got a couple uh, seconds. Go I ahead. just think it's unfortunate because the internet knew about her joining Impact before it actually showed up, and I think that that kind of ruined it a little bit. But it is good for. I mean, they oh, arguably it, have the best women's division in wrestling. Yeah, and Impact's got it up on their site too, so they're they're hyping it. So, hey guys, when we come back, man, I can't tell you how excited I am. Joe Malenko is going to be joining us, so make sure you. Stick around for hour number two. Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show. We're on Instagram now, Mark Hoke Show. Check that out. YouTube, The Mark Hoke Show. We're everywhere. MarkHokeShow.com, MarkHokeShow.podbean.com for all your podcasts as well. Stick around. Joe Malenko coming up. We'll be right back. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show and visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today and thanks for listening.